What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about one trade that I made today on the 25th of March in 2019. We're also going to hop into some big news that Apple released today. We're going to be talking about that and covering it and potentially looking at a swing trade in Apple guys. We're going to be talking about my thoughts on on Apple and we're also going to be talking about some other stocks and ETFs that I'm watching here to finish off the month of March in 2019 but before we do get into the topics of today's video if you find value in this video a little bit later on in the video if you enjoy the content feel free to go down below hit that like button guys it really does support me and supports the channel growth in general the channel's growth and if you guys are not a part if you're new to the channel and you're not a part of our discord community as well as our facebook group both 100 free those are linked down below in the description box for you to join feel free to hop in there join the conversation we have about 600 people in the discord group chat talking throughout the day pretty much all day at this point because there are a bunch of people in there giving valuable information so join those two discord or the, rather the one discord and the facebook group again down below in the description box and without further ado guys let's talk about what ended up happening today in the overall market so we saw kind of a roller coaster day to day in the markets right we weren't up crazy we weren't down crazy but the s p and the dow the nasdaq i feel like they couldn't form a direction today right they didn't pick the upside they didn't pick the downside but they were just hovering up and down up and down minimal swings throughout the day and we can see here on the s p 500 exactly what i'm saying right we opened up the day on a downswing but it wasn't too hard of a downswing and then we swung back up and then we swung back down swung back up towards the close of the market without really forming a direction right and we can see these previous days days that we did have a, a uh, you know a distinct direction these are easier days to trade in my opinion right we can see this day this was a clear direction day to the upside this day was a clear direction day to the downside right pretty much the whole entire day we downtrended but this day today it was a little down up down up these are a little harder days in my personal opinion especially if you're looking to swing trade stocks but we'll talk about that in a couple of minutes here but before we do get into that let's just take a look quickly at what we ended up closing at right so the S&P the 500 largest U.S. traded companies ended up closing the day down about two dollars and 35 cents down about 0.08 percent very minimal red day in the S&P the Dow Jones ended up closing the day up 14 dollars and 51 cents up about 0.06 percent very minimal green day in terms of the the Dow and the Nasdaq composite ended up closing the day. I believe it was down roughly 10 points at the close. This is the future that you're seeing right here, which is why it's uh, showing that it's green and it's still moving. But if we see here at, at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard, we ended up closing the day down about 13 points from where we are now. Uh, really, that, that would be, if my math is correctly, we ended up closing the day roughly down about 11 points, 12 points in the Nasdaq, a very minimal red day there. We can see, you know, just like the SPX guys, you know, this was pretty much a roller coaster all day. Not a massive move to the downside, not a massive move to the upside, but it kept swinging up and down, up and down throughout the entire day, which again makes it kind of difficult to trade here. So if we're hopping back to the S&P 500 here, there's a couple of key things that I want to show you um, that I'm personally looking at as well for tomorrow to decide where we're going in terms of the trend here. So for those of you guys that watched my video on Sunday, which was yesterday and Friday, we were talking about the critical support levels the S&P 500 was at. The one being at this 2970 or rather 2790 to $2,800 level of support and the other one 
from being at around the 50 simple moving average of support here on the 180 four hour chart. These are just two levels of critical support that we are currently at. And I was saying that if we were to break these levels, the next spot that I can see the S&P going down to was at around 27.35. And obviously, if we maintain these levels and slowly started to push up, that would be the continuation of the uptrend. And we can clearly see, guys, really we didn't pick any direction in terms of the S&P, which is what I really said a couple of minutes ago, right? Which is kind of difficult for me. Um, you know, I was going to take some overnight swing trades here, but I didn't want to hop in before we had a distinct direction, right? And what am I looking for in terms of a distinct direction here? If we hop into the five day, five minute, we'll see something very critical here, right? We notice how the 2860 level, we topped off that at that level at about a couple of days ago, we all know that. And from there, we saw the big sell-off down to 27.85, roughly at that level of support at around 27.90, right? It's not exactly that level, but it's roughly at that level, which is pretty good in my eyes, right? And we see a critical thing here, guys. We see a double bottom at exactly 27.85. So this is a good sign that we could potentially be looking to push up tomorrow, right? Double bottoms are very good for a reversal to the upside. And we all know that a double top is a good sign that we're reversing to the downside, right? And we can see here, guys, you know, yesterday or rather on Friday, we didn't really see a double uh, double bottom, which is why we ended up closing the day lower. But the fact that we saw a double bottom today and we ended up closing the day on an upswing here, that is a pretty good sign in my eyes that we could potentially see a green day tomorrow but there are still some barriers some resistance here uh resistance levels that i want to break out of and we can uh, and we can clearly see one of those being right here check out this trend line that i drew out for you guys right here this has been a level of resistance over the past two trading days we ended up topping off here at about 2821 on friday we ended up topping off at that trend line again um, earlier today and then towards the close of the market here although we did end up on that upswing which is a good sign we're still uh we still had some resistance some consolidation right under this point of resistance so in my eyes guys tomorrow if we open up you know green in terms of the SPS we break out of this level let's say we do something like this right let's say we do something like that and we end up testing the 2820 level again that's going to be a very good sign that the uptrend in the S&P is continuing we could potentially see more green if that does end up happening, right? But the other scenario here, the other case that could potentially happen, let's say we get rejected tomorrow by this resistance since we're still under it and we end up breaking the 2790 level and we end up breaking this double bottom here, the 2785 level, and we do something like this, right? What is that going to do? If we look on the 184 hour chart, which is another, um, you know, very critical chart I use, and this is why I like looking at a bunch of charts. If we see, you know, if that does end up playing out, right, we do end up selling off from there, breaking the 2785 double uh, bottom uh, support here. We're going to end up breaking the obviously the support on the longer term chart and the 50 simple moving average support as well, which is going to be something critical for us. Um, really to see a further sell-off to the downside here. So as of right now, you know, due to the close of the market being pretty flat, I personally think we can go either way, right? Which is why I'm looking at those critical levels that I just showed you guys. If we break out of that, right? If we break out of that resistance on the five day, five minute, five day, 15 minute, whatever chart that was, let me just uh, double check for you guys. So you can do it on your own uh, computers here. If we break this way, right? I think there's going to be a lot of green potential tomorrow, but let's say the other scenario, we break like that to the downside, we could be selling off more um, tomorrow, which is going to open up some plays in TVIX. We'll talk about that in a couple minutes here. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of the S&P 500. If we're looking at the Dow Jones very quickly, again, we closed the day up $14.51 today. We can see a lot of jazz here. Let me just quickly um, delete this for you guys to make it a little bit more pretty because... Uh, I don't want it to look too sloppy for you guys. Um, okay, let me just quickly set a, uh, is this the trend, the price level? Okay, this is what I want to show you guys here. So we can see 
Okay, so there's a couple of areas of resistance here um, in terms of the Dow Jones. We've been talking about this over the past couple of videos, but something that I'm keeping an eye on that's pretty critical right here is that we ended up holding this support at around $25,400, $25,500, which was a resistance from the past, uh, I think this was what, the 5th of uh, February in 2019. This was a resistance and obviously we broke above it, holding it as a new support level. So in terms of the Dow Jones guys, this is really, um, you know, on a critical support right now where if we break below it, there's going to be red, uh, more red downside in terms of the Dow Jones, in my personal opinion. But let's say we end up holding this, the S&P's pushing green tomorrow. This will most likely follow. We're going to be looking to fill up to around $25,700 to $25,800, which is the next resistance really from the past couple of months here in the, in the beginning of December in 2018, the middle of October in 2018. Those areas of resistance, they're obviously, you know, pushing all the way to today, which is the next level that we're going to look to get at. So in terms of the Dow Jones, you know, there's not much here that is uh, screaming to me that we're going to shoot down, we're going to shoot up. It's just really hovering on that support right now. And really, we're just going to see in the morning based on the futures, the large caps, what we're going to be doing. And when I'm doing my market analysis, guys, I'm mostly focusing on the S&P 500. Obviously, I look at the Dow and the NASDAQ, but my main focus is on the SPY, which is an ETF that tracks the SPX and the SPX, the S&P 500. It's Self, right? So just keep an eye on the support level. Very critical. We can either break below it, more red if that does happen, break above or hold above it, push to the upside. Obviously, you know, that could be the start of this horizontal pattern that we're currently in right now in the Dow Jones. And if we're taking a look at the five day, 15 minute chart here, we can see actually, let me just get off of this real quickly. We can see a very similar you know, pattern to the S&P, right? If I draw this downwards trend, we can see the level of resistance here back on Friday, here in the middle of the day, and then here towards the end of the market. So very similar to the SPX. Just take a look. We're going to break up here. That's going to be more green. Are we going to get rejected, pushed down to the downside here, break below this support level? That's obviously going to issue more red. So this, guys, the five-day, five-minute, honestly, is the key time frame chart that I'm watching tomorrow morning in terms of all these major markets here. So let's go to the NASDAQ very quickly, and you can see in terms of the NASDAQ, on the 184 hour chart very quickly, let's see some major areas of support and major areas of resistance very quickly. So we all know we topped off at 7,500. Last week, the NASDAQ went absolutely berserk. I feel like the past couple of weeks, the NASDAQ has been outperforming the SPX and the Dow. I'm pretty sure it actually has been. And we finally got that big pullback that we were waiting for from 7,500 all the way down to about 7,300 flat. And we can see the level of support here on the the previous resistance at about 7,300. The fact that we're holding that's a very, very good sign. So tomorrow, guys, we clearly see we're now trending between the 7,300 to the 7,375 level, and we're under this 50 simple moving average resistance now. So tomorrow, just keep an eye. Are we going to break out of this level to continue the uptrend? Are we going to break back into the 75? $400 level, that's going to be a very good sign that we're continuing this uptrend push in terms of the NASDAQ composite. And if we take a look back to the five day, five minute, the chart is actually not looking exactly like the SPX and the Dow is in terms of that resistance on the five day, five minute that we were looking at in those two indices. But we do notice here the strong, strong consolidation on this support. So this is a good sign that we're leveling out here. We're looking to either pick the upside or the downside. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of the major markets today, guys. Those resistances, especially on the SPX and the Dow, those are very key levels that I'm going to be watching tomorrow to decide or really to understand and, and interpret what direction are we going in either up or down. And of course, from there, we'll be able to decide what we're going to do, what I'm going to do in terms of my trading for 
the day. So let's just quickly talk about what I traded today. Then we'll get into the Apple news and then we'll talk about some other stocks very quickly before I do end off this video. So today, like I mentioned in my morning video, if we were to sell off in the beginning of the market, I was going to trade TVIX. And for those of you guys that don't know, I upload morning videos now most of the uh, days throughout the week, as many as often as I can, I'm uploading morning videos. So stay tuned to those. They typically come out, you know, at the market open, sometimes before the market open. So stay tuned to those videos because I do call out and talk about some stocks that I'm personally watching and looking to trade for the day. And TVIX was one that I did end up calling out this morning, and it did have a very, very good morning. And for those of you guys that don't know, TVIX trades mostly based upon the S&P 500. And we see the S&P 500 here. We saw the big pump up to 2807 this morning, and then we saw some very, very quick selling all the way down to about 2785. This was a 20 point swing in the SPX in the matter of about 40 to 45 minutes. And you can imagine when this happened, TVIX spiked like crazy. And that is where I ended up grabbing my very quick little scalp profit in terms of uh, TVIX. And if we go to TVIX very quickly, we can see exactly what I'm talking about, right? This was a move here that a lot of people could miss, right? But I watch this like a hawk. Usually in the morning, I'm doing something like this here. Let me show you guys. And for those of you guys that don't know, I'm sure a lot of you guys already know this. You can have two charts up at the same time in Think or Swim. So I do something like this in the morning, right? I have the SPX here right? I watch it on the one day, one minute very closely. And then I see, you know, as this sells off, as this sells off very aggressively, obviously this is spiking up. So we saw the spike up in the SPX, the aggressive sell off beginning to sell off here. And that's where I ended up hopping in to TVIX. And obviously you can add the, uh, you know, studies here, but I'll show you how to do that in another video. I don't want to waste too much time on that, but that's pretty much how I set it up in the morning guys, right? I have the SPX, then I have uh, TVIX on the left, usually in that formation, right? And then I ended up hopping into TVIX this morning with a smaller position than usual because of the volatility and the quickness and uh, the speed of this trade. I didn't want to risk too much capital in this trade. So I ended up putting a little bit of my money in here. Not, not as big as I usually go in TVIX, to be honest, guys. But I ended up grabbing a nice 1.5% profit. So we found the bottom at about $30.15. I ended up getting in roughly, I believe it was around like $30.67, something like that. And then I ended up setting my limit sell up about 1.5 percent, right? And I was watching it very closely. I didn't have a stop loss set. I typically, you know, when I'm doing day trades, sometimes I have a mental stop loss, which I talk about sometimes in my videos. That's more for uh, people with more experience, guys, because let's say, you know, you're a beginner trader and you try to have a mental stop loss on a stock, meaning you don't actually have a stop loss on it. You're going to cut your losses manually. You know, sometimes you might not stick to your word of cutting losses and then you might lose even more money, right? When I have a mental stop loss, I'm very disciplined about it and I'm very strict. And this is one of the days where I did have a mental stop loss. And that's what I ended up doing, guys. Luckily, I didn't have to cut my losses on this one. I took about 1.4, 1.5%. And that's actually all I ended up trading today, guys, because like I talked about in the chat, right, and then like I talked about earlier on in this video, there was um, no direction forming in terms of the markets, right? We weren't showing that we're pushing up. We weren't showing that we were selling off. I was tempted to hop into some swing trades towards the end of the market. I was looking at NVIDIA. I was looking at Apple to potentially hop into. I was looking at Activision Blizzard as well. But I decided to just keep my capital in cash and wait till tomorrow morning to see what direction we're pushing in before hopping into these stocks that are affected by the market sentiment in general, right? Typically when the markets sell off, heavily, right? Let's say we had a red day tomorrow and I hopped in today. I would most likely be red on some of those swing trades if I did end up hopping in, um, which is why I decided to just wait 
you know, wait, and there's no harm in just waiting and waiting up for a setup uh, tomorrow morning to see where the market is headed. So let's talk about now very quickly, Apple stock. You saw in the thumbnail, Apple swing trade, and you saw obviously in the title, some new services that Apple is planning on launching. So I have some notes here on my phone. I want to just quickly go over these guys. I'm sure a bunch of you already know this, but for those of you guys that don't know, today Apple came out with some crazy, crazy news. So let's just go over some of these, uh, these, um, uh, this news very quickly. So new subscription service is on the way in sectors including gaming. We saw their gaming service that's coming. I believe that's uh, later on in the autumn. We're going to get to that in a couple of minutes. We saw the news service that they're looking to launch, the payments they're looking to launch, the Apple credit card, which we all, uh, I think a lot of us already know this already because this was news from a couple of weeks ago. And they also have original content from their streaming service. So Apple TV Plus is what the new streaming service is actually called. And they're looking to make original content sort of like Netflix, right? Netflix is dumping a lot of cash, a lot of their money into creating these original movies, these original TV shows that... That's what Apple's looking to do, right? They're looking to copy that model, not really copy it, but kind of make it their own, right? And do something very, very similar, right? We saw the new gaming service called Apple Arcade coming across mobile, desktop, home devices, including over 100 new and exclusive games. That plan for this is to come out, the plan for this is for it to come out in the autumn. So probably this fall and a couple of months from now is when the Apple Gaming, the Apple Arcade is going to come out. And I don't really know how I feel about this, to be completely honest with you guys, because I'm not much of a gamer Again, to be completely honest, I play Call of Duty sometimes. I play NBA 2K. That's actually my favorite sports game. That's what I play. But in terms of Apple Arcade, you know, I don't know if I'm I'm going to use that, to be completely honest with you guys. And I don't know what the market out there is looking like for Apple Arcade. Are there people out there that are going to actually use this? Obviously, there's, there's definitely going to be people that are going to use it. But I want to see if there's high demand for it. Let me drop, uh, drop a comment. Let me know... What do you guys think about this? Is Apple Arcade something you'd be interested in? Or would you rather just turn on your Xbox, your PS4, whatever you guys use, the Wii? I'm sure a lot of you guys don't use the Wii. But hey, if you have a Wii, would you turn that? Or would you turn that on or use Apple Arcade? Let me know down below in the comments section. Another big thing they launched was Apple News, which is actually now available, I'm pretty sure. It's a new news service coming, which includes magazines such as The New Yorker, Time Magazine, and National Geographic. This news service is going to cost $9.99. I'm pretty sure that's $9.99 per month. I could be mistaken. This might be $9.99 per year. Let me know down below. I actually didn't specify here on my notes, which is something I probably should have done, stupid stas. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that that's probably per month in my personal opinion ah, that might be a bit pricey actually maybe it's per year let me know down below if you guys know something I probably should have done here but uh the next thing we're looking into which is actually something that I'm pretty excited for I see a lot of potential in this as well as the streaming service those are the two uh most things that I'm excited for here is the Apple card guys so Apple revealed and released the Apple card which is a payment service that is looking to completely overthrow the wallet right the traditional wallet where you have your credit cards your cash whatever else you have in there pictures of your family whatever that is looking to overthrow this. They teamed up with Goldman Sachs and MasterCard to create this, which will be globally uh, accepted, which is another big thing in my personal opinion. So what do you guys think about this, right? Obviously, Apple is straying away from their iPhone being the main business, right? Their main revenue uh, driver, right? Because we saw Apple sales go down when Apple sales go or iPhone sales go down. You know, Apple in general, their revenue goes down as well because the iPhone is the major part of their business, right? So these services, them launching these services, I believe is huge. And we all know recurring revenue models are great. I love those. I love investing in companies that have subscription service models where they're getting payments every single month because if people don't cancel those payments that's money coming in 
every single month for the business. And of course, that's very, very expandable. So what do you guys think about this? I would love to know. I'm personally very happy about this. I think, you know, to be honest, I think Apple TV with the, uh, you know, Netflix being their main competitor, that's going to be very difficult to, you know, get into with as much as... <clears throat> a brand that Netflix has built, it's going to be hard, in my opinion, to overthrow Netflix, right? Do I think Apple's going to be a major competitor to Netflix? I think it's super possible, but you also have to think Disney's coming out with their own streaming service. They, they're going to be a competitor. Like this is a very uh, interesting space here, but with the amount of cash the amount of capital that Apple does have, they're probably going to flood a lot of that into creating original content, a lot of awesome original content that I think could do very well depending on what the movies and TV shows are like. We obviously don't have that information yet, but I think there is um, I think there is some potential there, but again, Netflix, it's going to be hard to out, to overthrow Netflix, which has with as big as a, you know, a brand they've built, they've been in people's uh, heads over the past couple of years. Everyone thinks Netflix, 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 Netflix and chill, right? <laughs> That is something that, you know, everyone just knows now. So Apple coming in, they have to do something huge. They have to put a ton of capital in this to push it. And I think they can very well do that. And again, just drop a comment. Let me know. What do you guys think about this? So I'm actually looking to trade Apple tomorrow as a potential swing trade, right? You saw it in the thumbnail, Apple stock swing trade. And the reason why is because we got rejected by 195. We ended up pulling down all the way to about 187. The stock actually went down today after all this news, which is pretty surprising in my eyes. But again, that's actually a better buying opportunity, in my personal opinion, for a swing trade, right? And now we're trading above the 185-ish old resistance, which is now a new support. So if Apple is able to hold this level of about 185, 186 tomorrow, as well as maintain the 50 simple moving average, I think there's a ton of potential here, especially on this good news today. Let's say the stock rallies tomorrow back up to 195. I think that's a very good... Um, move and a swing trade to be completely honest with you guys right so that's about a 3.5 to 4 percent margin of profit there on apple i'm watching that one very very closely for tomorrow as an entry point ideally at around 189.50 potentially 190 as we confirm the bounce on the 50 sma and we confirm the bounce off of this new support roughly at about 188 so apple i'm watching that one tomorrow guys another one i'm watching tomorrow is NVIDIA, ticker symbol NVDA. Again, this is one that I almost got tempted into entering today, but I want to see the direction of the market. But this is one that's really trading on the support at about 173, which was a previous resistance. And we're seeing some green candlesticks forming there after market hours, which is a very good sign that we're maintaining this and we're slowly starting to push up. So let's say we maintain this, guys. We get into 175 tomorrow. I see a lot of potential from there up to 185. And if we continue the uptrend even further there, which would give us about 6 7% in terms of NVIDIA stock. So another one I'm watching tomorrow is ACB. I almost pulled the trigger on this one today but let me show you guys a point of resistance that kind of scared me off and that was right here on the 50 sma under the 50 sma on the 20 day one hour chart we noticed a good sign was that we held the 180 sma support here at a higher low from the previous or roughly right at the support not at a higher low, but the fact that we did hold the 180 SMA as a support as well as this level is a good sign. But we got rejected by the 50 SMA, which is putting us kind of in this weird area where we're trading between the two simple moving averages. So let's say we need to pick a direction, right? Let's say we go down here. Let's say we break this level and the level of support. I'm not going to be looking to trade ACB at that point. If anything, that's going to be a good short or a good put option. And uh, if we break above the 50 SMA's resistance here, we start to push out of this level tomorrow, which is ideally what I want to see. I think that's going to be a good entry here for Aurora Cannabis for potential trade back up to about 1030, which offers at least 10%. And if I recall, yeah, about 10% in profit there in terms of ACB. So really the main ones tomorrow, guys, I'm watching are Apple, NVIDIA, and ACB. Those are my top three excuse me for tomorrow. And let me just quickly talk about KO because somebody actually excuse me. Oh my God, I keep 
Oh my god, I keep burping. It must have been those, uh, what did I eat earlier? I ate like rice and chicken. That stuff really sometimes brings out the gas in my stomach. Sorry guys, if that's a little, um, uh, too, uh, uh, revealing for you all. But <laughs> KO is one that I'm watching here for tomorrow as well. And KO is actually one that has been nicely consolidating around the $45 to $46 level. And I consider this more of a safer swing trade, right? We talked about this one over the past couple of weeks. I haven't talked about it in, or we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. I haven't talked about it in the past two or three weeks of the channel here. But we ended up holding the $44, $45 of support, the level here of support. And from there, you know, we ended up pulling back down here. And the thing I'm watching here, guys, is this cup pattern forming, right? We formed a higher low from the previous, meaning that we could be starting a nice little uptrend here. So if we end up breaking roughly 46.20, which was the previous resistance, and let's say we break the 180 SMA of resistance as well, I think KO is going to be a very, very solid swing trade. So if you're watching, whoever commented in, on my channel about KO, I forget who it was, if you're watching... I think KO is very, very solid. I'm going to be watching it tomorrow. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and also let me know what do you guys think about Apple? Is this something that you like? Now, you know, do you like them? expanding their revenues up, you know, their revenues to different service models. I'm sure a lot of you guys like that. I personally like it. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Again, if you're new, subscribe, hit that notification bell. I upload every single day, sometimes twice a day, morning and in the afternoon towards the night. Again, I will... I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.